Over the past few years, I've solved a lot of different coding questions around 950 on a lot of different coding websites. Mainly because I was bad at programming and I wanted to get better. I have solved everything from really basic pattern printing problems to really hard competitive coding questions. And some of these were asked in my Amazon and Google interview while others I don't think I'll ever see again. I thought if I was able to solve any problem that was thrown at me, I'll be a much better programmer. And let me tell you the truth, that was far from reality. You don't need to end up solving 950 problems. And obviously I'm not an expert in this field but here are the mistakes that I made that you don't have to make so that you don't have to end up solving 950 questions. So the first thing and the most important one is to have a structure. You need to have some sort of structure when you are trying to learn new things and solve a bunch of questions. I remember when I was starting out I picked up dynamic programming and graph questions when I wasn't even able to solve array questions properly and I quickly learned that I won't be able to learn anything if I go like this. I needed to change my approach. When I was getting started there weren't a lot of these resources available today and YouTube wasn't filled with roadmaps so I had to figure it out on my own. I joined a few paid courses and that really helped me during that time. Like I understood what I needed to study, how I needed to study and what questions were important. Small things like how important pointers are before you start trees or linked lists or graphs, stuff like that. Secondly, try to solve questions that are actually asked in interviews instead of just focusing on solving 100, 200, 500 questions. And that's not that hard to figure out. You can go on lead code, discuss section and read through company interviews and everything and you'll figure out what questions are being asked right now because I made this mistake a lot whenever I did a new question I used to solve 10 15 more questions very similar to this one obviously that increased the number of questions that I've solved but I didn't really learn anything from those questions and I ended up wasting a lot of time that brings me to the third point challenge yourself but know when to give so, up. So a typical coding interview is 45 minutes long. Even less considering you'll be introducing yourself, talking about the question and a lot more. So you need to prepare yourself to come up with a solution in like 30 to 45 minutes. And trust me that is not an easy thing to do. So after some practice I started to time myself. I only gave myself 30 to 45 minutes to come up with a solution. And if I didn't have a working code in those 30 to 45 minutes, I gave up. So usually what should happen is whenever you see a question, you should have a pretty good idea of where this is going in the first few minutes. If I didn't have that idea, I gave up. And a lot of people spent hours, even days on questions. I respect their grind, but that's a lot. I don't have that kind of time. So if you can't come up with a solution in 45 minutes, give up and then go look for a solution. Which brings me to point number four. Irrespective of whether I was able to come up with the solution or I was not able to come up with the solution, I always went ahead and looked at the editorial or the official solution and not just the most optimized or the best solution. I went through all of them. I used to watch YouTube tutorials. I used to read editorials. Because you should know all the ways that question can be solved. Because that makes you think about the different ways. And how you can use the solution of this question to solve, let's say, another question. I have done this a lot. You get introduced to new tricks and techniques. And sometimes you look at the solution and think, wait, I could never come up with something like that. And congrats, you've just learned something new that you will hopefully be using in your next question. Also try to not learn the solution because that hasn't worked out ever and I'm pretty sure it won't work out in your case. You'll probably forget half of it and it will be much better if you understand what's going on. This is why I preferred YouTube tutorials over editorials when I was just starting out. And this brings me to my next point. Just understanding the solution is not enough. You need to go ahead and code it yourself. Like you need to understand what's going on and then write your own code for that solution and try to submit that. What will happen is you'll make mistakes, you'll add bugs to your code, you'll get stuck in edge cases and that's good because that will help you learn things that you probably wouldn't have learned otherwise. It's better to be stuck right now than in an actual interview and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes again. And lastly, I had this problem a lot. I used to forget a lot of questions when I came back to them in a week or a month. I just couldn't figure out what I did and why I did it. Even my own code didn't make sense to me a lot of times and this wasn't just me. A lot of my friends were struggling with the same problem. So instead of focusing on questions, I started focusing on methods. A topic that I really struggled with was sliding window problems. I just couldn't figure out how they work. I spent a lot of time understanding how a sliding window works, how you add elements from the right and remove elements from the left. I took a pen and paper and I wrote down a lot of iterations and how the window will look after every iteration. And it just started making sense to me and then I picked a lot of sliding window problems and they seemed pretty easy now and then I solved a lot of these problems the next week and then the next month and basically I tried to keep them in my loop since then I felt pretty comfortable whenever I saw a new sliding window problem. So now the question arises, how many questions do you need to solve to get good at programming? Well, there isn't a number. Obviously you can't solve 303 questions and then think that you'll clear an interview. I solved over 950 problems because I didn't know how to do it. I just did anything and everything that I could do. You don't have to do that. It's always the quality of questions that matters instead of the quantity. And I don't think I can give a single number that will work for all. 200 to 300 quality 
security problems is a pretty good sweet spot if you are just starting out. For me, whenever I need to revise for an interview, I don't solve more than 70, 75, maybe 100 problems. That is a list that I've come up with after years of practice. If you want that list or something similar to that, I can make that for you. Just let me know down in the comment section. Also, if you're ever stuck on a coding question and you don't know what to do, and you feel stuck. So check this video out where I share a simple trick so you can solve any coding question in a time limit. Bye-bye.